Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's already time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. It's, this... it's early, but here we go. We got we're getting a couple in this one. Yeah, so we're we're what like uh, like five Disney videos in the last like twenty four to thirty six hours about stupid decisions they're making. Well, I think Disney's panicking. Uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna talk about. This is a uh, panic at the Mickey Mouse Disco. Uh, it looks like Disney is panicking. I think they're starting to see possibly some of the, the uh, numbers come in for this proxy vote, and it's not looking good. Uh, we saw yesterday they threw their live action movie guy overboard. Yeah. Oh, well, he just left. They're not saying he uh, was fired. They fired him. They but fired you him. Got, you know, no one takes a demotion just to pr produce a film and then leave for you know, entrepreneurial endeavors, you know? Right, right. Now we have this, uh, this little nugget drop in today. Well, it was that, last night, but we saw it today, yes. Uh, that Disney is, is uh, you know, basically taking stock of all the things they've done for you. Well, right, and some of the things that they're gonna, they, they, they talk about are just recent. We also have, with today, a, a price hike on Disney theme park tickets at Magic or Walt Disney World for 2025. Of course we do. Of right? course we do. And then they had an announcement that, oh, in 2025, yesterday, they announced 2025, if you go to Walt Disney World and you're staying at a resort hotel, the day you arrive, you'll get a free pass, complimentary pass to Typhoon Lagoon or Blizzard Beach. Yeah, and then today the ticket prices went up, and ten one the hotel prices will go up for twenty twenty five because it's never free. Yeah, it's just them telling you that to get your butts there, but you're paying for it. You're just paying for it other ways, and they clearly need people over at Blizzard Beach and Typhoon Lagoon because the numbers aren't good, or they wouldn't be giving free tickets to those places because they get people over there and they can say, "Oh, look, we have all these sales on our food and merch." Yep, yep, that's what it's all about, guys. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about this. I'm gonna let Geeky lead this video. I am, for the most part, I, I think I've, I've checked out mentally from a lot of the uh, the daily Disney drama. It's my job. So. <laughs> it's her job at piratesandprincesses.net. And we're also bringing the Pirates and Princesses podcast uh, back online, too. We'll talk more about this, but don't expect us to be quite as scathing over there as we are here. But we're still going to be honest. I'm not going to be I'm not honest. Gonna, you know, lie about something that's no, stupid. Just no F-bombs, no potty mouth. Yeah, I'm not going to potty mouth that one. But, I mean, I will try not to. I will try very hard. Bob to. Iger is a pee-pee, poo-poo, duty head. That's right. So let's uh, let's get into it, guys. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. You'll get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! And speaking of podcasts, real quick, you guys have been fantastic. Go out and subscribe, please. To the audio edition of Clownfish TV on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you find podcasts. We also have another podcast for gaming news. This is kind of a backup for us in case things go south with YouTube. We hope they don't, but you never know. And uh, we're also bringing D-Res back on top of Pirates and Princesses. So you're going to have a lot of Clownfish stuff to listen to. That's right. All right. Let's get into it. Okay. So yesterday, Disney apparently sent out another letter to their to their shareholders about uh, voting for them, vote white, vote white. Disney seems to be very nervous because we've always we talked about it the other day. All these media outlets like, oh, Peltz has no chance in hell of winning and all this other crap. Um, and you know he might not. I, we don't know. But Disney seems to be getting very upset. Like first of all, we had their their earnings call and they suddenly pulled out these, you know, oh, everybody's, what they bring up in this thing. Everybody's going to get dividend and the, the epic um, games thing and Taylor Swift and all this other shit that they just pulled out of their, their butts and they're like, hey, look, look, I made you a present. And, you know, oh, and you're getting dividends and you're getting more and which they, they, they gonna, we're gonna, that's going to come up here in a minute. They did that. And then they have the media in lockstep talking about how Pels can't win. And now they put out this thing today. And this is, sounds to me, oh, and then they fired Sean Bailey. So it yeah. sounds to me like they are panicking. Mm -hmm. um, here's what they sent out. Dear fellow shareholder, when Bob Iger returned as CEO in November 2022, he and the board committed to an ambitious plan to restore long-term shareholder value that we completely forgot about until we had to. Yeah, right. Just over Whoops. a year later, they have delivered on that commitment. Book reports do. And the company is moving Whoops. forward on a number of significant growth priorities. In spite this is and this is after he told Florida they were only they were only important. And Florida only was on Florida because of them. Mm -hmm. In spite of your board's record of success. And the company's renewed growth strategy, two activist hedge funds could replace five current directors with their nominees. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, in spite of your board's current records of success. No, it's because 
there isn't a record of success that two activists, not one, two, and technically three activist hedge funds were, were, were trying to do something. Okay. Yeah. In spite of your board's success, these this activists, people are just attacking us for no damn good reason. Do you think shareholders are stupid? Yes, you do. I saw your Ludwig von Drake video. You totally do. Um, we we who we believe they're talking about the the five current directors and their own nominees who we believe have no meaningful plan to create shareholder value. Unlike us, who never did jack shit until we had to. Do not have the qualifications or experience needed to be effective Disney directors, unlike us who have run the company into the ground, and could disrupt the company's significant progress that we just suddenly started making recently when we had to. Protect the value of Disney, your Disney investment by voting today on the white proxy card. No, if you want to protect the value of your investment, I wouldn't do anything but vote white. For, all, for only our 12 nominees who have been here with Iger when we made all the shitty decisions that we made and put our company in this position. Please note that voting for more than 12 nominees will invalidate your vote on the election, election of directors. And they're going to probably make it really convoluted. So, like, you have to vote white. If you get the white card, you have to, you have to pick the white card. You, if you get the card, you can pick who you want. Just FYI. Yeah. Um, here's the promises made and the promises kept since November 2022. Since Bob Iger came back, these are what we promised we're going to do. And most of them have just been in the last, like, you know, month. But... You know, we, we're, we're doing what we said we were going to do when we had to. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. They're, look, this, again, this is, this is like the late book report. They, they waited until the last minute, basically, mm -hmm. to be like, oh, yeah, all that stuff we promised. Oh, they're really going to expect it. Because I think Disney's used to lying to people. They're used to lying to people and buying time and everybody laps it up. They've never really been challenged to this extent before. And I think there's a very real chance that there's there's going to be some change They're there. They're obviously flipping out. Yeah. Yep. They're flipping out. Here are the promises made since you know, in, since November 22. In the last year and a couple months, here's, what we, here's the promises we made. Most of them are just recent. Restored the cash dividend paid in January 2024, and dividend payments declared for July was increased 50%, which they announced after they had to yes. because the proxy, proxy battle – was started begun the proxy war has and they had to turn around and and, and oh shit we're giving you more money to keep our asses here you, you guys could have done this before and you didn't because you didn't have it to give you don't have it to give now and he's even saying that he's like Peltz is like I don't think it's a good idea to raise that right now you don't have it to give out but they're just doing it to try to keep themselves in position and then you know what'll probably happen oh we're locked in sorry guys we can't give you any more dividends for a while though because we can't afford it but yeah you kept pretty us much. here Good job. Yeah, they're they're gonna give you the bare minimum of what they need to. They're gonna feed people a line to keep them in the seat in the boardroom, right? But th they don't really have to deliver some of the stuff. And you'll talk about this with the uh, the profitability. This is this is months after this proxy battle's over. So if they don't, you know, you keep them in in the boardroom and they don't deliver on it, oh well. It's like last year. Yeah. Announce the stock buyback program with three billion target for this year. Yeah, you announced that like the you know at the meeting. You yep. just announced it. You just announced it. Same with the dividend, the extra dividend. You literally just announced it like in the last month. I mean, these are just brand new. That you just pulled out your ass. Okay, are on track to meet or exceed the seven point five billion cost cutting target. And to put a $2 billion increase, because they said originally $5.5 billion. And that's why they turned around and fired everybody, including Perlmutter, and they got rid of a bunch of people. Now, I want to remind you, Chapek was already going to do a bunch of, of firing and cost-cutting, and he got shit for it. So everybody cheered when they brought Bob Iger back, thinking they weren't going to get cut. And they turned around and cut people more than Chapek was going to. And they're like, we're cutting more, we're cutting more. I'm like, well, maybe you should have cut down some of the budgets on the movies, because maybe you'd have a lot more money if you didn't lose millions of dollars on things like the Marvels. Yeah. And wish and all these dumbass bonehead moronic things that you guys keep spending money on, you know, maybe you won't get battles with the state of Florida. I don't know. Uh, yeah. You yeah. know, maybe if you take your politics and just, you know, keep them to yourself like every other, most every other company does because, you know. Well, up until recently now, now it's expected. Yeah, and look what happens. Yeah, when you every start doing time, it. every time a company takes a hard political stance on something and they start to virtue signal. It always, always, always backfires. I would argue that if you t they took a hard political stance the other way, it wouldn't be good either. I mean, no, companies that, need that, to stay out of it either way. Yeah, I mean, people, look, they, they come to Disney because they're trying to get away from the real world. They want escapism. They want fantasy. They want to get away from things with their families, go to theme parks, 
whatever, eat some food and turn off their brains and not have to deal with the real world. But you have to pay more money. We're going to get to that in a minute. Yeah. On track to generate $8 billion in annual free cash flow, a 60% year-over-year increase. On track. You don't know this. This is on track. We're supposed to be a 60% year-over-year increase as compared to what? Also, yeah, you're going to be on track to generate more cash flow because you're cutting a lot of shows. It's not because you're making money. It's because you're cutting budgets and cutting back on things. And you're making fewer movies. You're shelving movies and things. And, and, and like things that you're going to work on, you're like, you don't know if they're going to come to, to fruition now. Because you're like, we have to cut back on the number of Marvel films, for example. And all that. You're shelving, so you're just taking that budget and rolling back. And you're not making any money. And then you might be making money because you're doing dumbass things like this where you're going to raise the tickets up 5 to $10 a person. Now, this is for next year. But you guys, Genie Plus, I can't. Every other week, it's like Genie Plus has hit a new record high. Genie Plus has hit a new record high on how much you keep nickel and diming people. But whatever. Yeah, it's because you're, you're so good. Improved entertainment streaming operating income by Q1, 86%. Q1, that was uh, October through uh, the end of December. Yeah. That's when you started making cuts. Streaming operating income means you just cut a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. And you just did it. Like, just, just did it recently. Okay, yeah, yeah. Complete track record of excellence right there. I can yeah. prove that for years the, the Disney board that's in place has been, you know, putting Disney shareholders first and doing what they should be doing. Because they just mail these changes when they last minute when they are forced to. And even the even the thing about like the um, the the cost cutting, the only reason they went to that extreme and did that was because Pelts threatened to go after them last year, mm. and he only pulled back because they actually were going to do something about it, and they still fucked it up. Yeah, he basically gave them a reprieve. He said, "Okay, you have another year, and I'm going to keep an eye on you, always watching." And uh, they still dropped the ball. They actually they have more box office bombs this year i think that they've yeah. ever had in any any little time mermaid did make money 46 million that was the win guys hot damn they're rolling in it but the media's running with that they're like little mermaid live action made a turn to profit elemental turned a profit after how many months in the theater yeah well no because they're like they're like oh we're gonna get to that that's what oh, we had the top stream of movies okay, okay whatever um then they're talking this one this one's fun we expect to reach profitability on our direct-to-consumer combined streaming businesses combined, combined, in Q4, by, by Q4 of, uh, this year, and deliver do double digits in the future. So we're hope that we're, we're supposed to be profitable by this year, which they said in the beginning. But it's, I don't think they're anywhere near profitability. No, they're not. They they are. They took a massive hit. Now, to be fair, uh, all these streaming companies, they took a massive hit. They could not have foreseen the tech implosion that we had and the advertising implosion. But beyond that, like Disney has been, you know, using Disney plus as a way to, you know, keep people interested. Like, okay, okay guys, if you can just hold out until 2024, 2025, we're going to be profitable. We're going to make money. Honest, well, honest, I love honest. How they would always do this where they were like with hot star, they were like getting, like it was way cheaper. So when they would have their, you know, whatever their ARPU would be, ARPU. it would always be really, really low for hot star so they would always say here's our arpu it's like you know some like six dollars and something you know ex excluding hot star because it was like 80 cents you know if you actually counted it in you were losing money oh yeah but they don't they, it's, it's how they massage the data but don't worry they're going to deliver double digit profit margins in the future because they said so <laughs> they, they said so Initiate a 60 billion 10 year program to invest and expand our parks and cruise lines. A lot, okay, the cruise lines have a lot of stuff was already in play. Like their ships, they already, those were already being done. Like that wasn't anything new. Um, that's been going for years. A lot, uh, some of this money, I think, was just, you know, the regular budget for upkeep on the parks. And we're supposed to be having this investing and expanding our parks when you're telling us, okay, like at Walt Disney World, what are you doing? Well, we're rethinking Splash Mountain. Okay. And. We're going to put a new Country Bear Jamboree show in with our IP. Okay. And? And we're going to do a Tree of Life projection. Well, I know they got Zootopia. We've been teasing it for Disney World. We're going to put a show on the tree. And, and oh, we're going to reskin Dinosaur and maybe give you, you know, Encanto Land. Yeah, Encanto Land. They're going to reskin uh, Dinosaur to Indiana Jones, which is a 30-year-old ride. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, meanwhile, at Epic Universe... 
Mm -hmm. uh, everything's brand spanking new and it looks amazing and it's right across town and it's probably going to be cheaper. Well, in Disneyland, they are trying to get up a whole new expansion or there because because they'll go there first, a whole new expansion in Disneyland, but they have to get approval from Anaheim first. And then overseas, they're doing stuff, but they're also splitting the cost of that. Like when they have the, the Chinese parks, they're, they don't own them. Like they're not owned by Disney. I mean, so it, it's just like, like I said, we, they'll just clone it from there and it's R&D. They pay for it and then Disney gets to benefit from it. Yep. You know, that's what it's $60 billion. And how much of that is, is, is going to be, you know, allocated to fixing your shit that's already broken. Okay. Anyway, again, another thing that they pulled out of their ass was, and they pulled that one out of their ass after they got in trouble with uh, Florida. Yeah. Okay. So you've, you're noticing a trend. They don't do anything unless they're forced to do it. Mm. And Epic Universe is coming for them and Epic Universe starts showing stuff. Oh, we're going to do $60 billion investment in our parks. Well, you better do it quick because Epic Universe is coming next year and it's going to kick your ass. Yeah. And if they do get Pokemon and Zelda too, oh my God, you're fucked. Anyway, let me continue. See, we, I mean, can't, we can't say that on Pirates and Princesses. No, but it's true. And I'm sorry. People are like, I still prefer Disney. Honestly, I prefer Disney over Universal too. I'm not going to lie. Universal's getting Mario Brothers. They already have Pokemon over in Japan. It's likely to come over here. Oh, yeah. They bring that over here. They're, well, they're as, well, Mario's either more recognizable, as recognizable as Mickey Mouse, and Pokemon's like the number one IP in the world. Yeah. I mean, dude. Okay. Anyway, we reorganized Disney to put more decision making and authority with our creative teams. To be able to do what? You're already cutting other budgets. We gave them back the power to make good movies and shows and all this other shit. But we cut up their budget so they can't do anything. What creative teams? All the good people left. Left. Or they got pushed out. You pushed out John Lasseter because he what? Hugged people? Well, I mean, I still don't know what the, the hell he actually did. In, at the animation studio, a bunch of people left because they kind of got pushed out for certain yeah. Things a lot of the uh, you know, the 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 nine old men they wouldn't have made it very long. Walt's nine no. old men wouldn't have made it very long in the current climate, right? And the thing is, and then they do wish and then it bombs, you yeah. know. Pixar keeps picking stupid things, and then you know, they're doing side out too because it's one they can probably know they'll make money on. A Toy Story 5, you know, the creative how you're just repurposing old things, and you creative how too. You've always been doing is live action remakes of all your animated films. Oh, wait, you just now got rid of that guy. Okay, so why is why is Kathleen Kennedy still there? That, yes. Why is Thank Kathleen you. Kennedy of all the people you need to get rid? She needed to be the first one to go because Star Wars is not bringing it. No, and the media is all like acolyte, the acolyte. I'm like the acolyte is probably gonna be dog shit. And then you know we don't know that, but given the way that when I keep hearing about it, the comments made, it's like we want to honor the, the you know Star Wars, but we want to undo it at the same time. It's like what the hell's wrong with you? Have you learned nothing? No, you haven't. That's the point. But we're going to get back to our creative teams. But you won't see any, any of they did like last year. You're not going to see any results of this for years. Okay. I do agree with giving it back to the, you know, giving the creativity back to the teams. But I don't think that you're going to, or if you are, it's going to have the caveat of, well, the budgets are cut. Yeah. Um, this one's funny. Oversaw the creative juggernaut that earned 20 Academy Award nominations. Doesn't mean you win them all. And a lot of those nominations were for 20th Century Studios stuff. More than any other company and had six of the top 10 most streamed movies across all streaming platforms in the U.S. in 2023. I, I, I quite, it was from Nielsen ratings. And I questioned some of those. Because I don't think Sing 2 was, should have been on the list. And that's, that's not two. Disney. But I'm mm. like, Sing 2 was on the list. They also had one show in the top stream shows. And it was Bluey, which was popular before Disney got hold of it. Yeah, it's not even blue or blue is not even Disney's thing, right? They no, just they just they just acquired the yeah they acquired the streaming rights to for it for the U.S. Yeah, but it's not even theirs. And the shows they had none. Oh, Disney would never make Bluey. It's well, too it's had... too smart. It's too edgy for a kid show. Oh, they, they would they never make it. They dumb it down. They did have Grey's Anatomy, but technically it's not considered theirs. It's considered Netflix because they made a deal with Netflix. Um, so they but the movies they had like like uh, Moana, which is was number one, which is why they're like. Oh my God, guys, we're going to take our Moana show and make it Moana too. Slap that shit together. Hurry up and get voice actors signed on. I know, right? You're, 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 ta you're announcing Moana too before you know if Dwayne Johnson can even come back. Oh, Dwayne Johnson would do whatever they tell him to. They poop, he'll sniff it. He has no problem with that. <laughs> um, and I mean, I just... And he'll say, you're welcome. And he, yes, he will. He said, yeah, you're welcome. Um, I'm sure they kiss his ass enough. They, then Encanto was number two. Now, Moana and Encanto, I get. I really do get why those are streaming a lot because they are very, very good. 
here, here's the list, the top three movies. Okay, yeah, Moana's one, Encanto's two, Sir Mario Brothers movies three, Elemental supposedly number four. But they, okay, but here's the thing about that. If it's true Elemental was number four and they're getting all their attention there, that just further proves that Disney has a problem because they just trained their audience to wait till it's on streaming. Minions Rise of Gru is five. Sing two. I still don't get this one. Six. Frozen is number seven. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is number eight. That one, that that's interesting because they're from at least where I'm sitting. Maybe I'm not sitting in the right place, but I'm sitting in the cheap seats. But from where I'm saying there was no excitement around it because who wants a Black Panther movie without the Black Panther? Well, again, but you know? look, this was in the last in 2023. So that's when it came to streaming. Oh, uh, okay. Avatar The Way of Water. Um, that makes sense. It makes sense because these were out the end of 2022 or whatever. Or they were 2022. They came to streaming. And when they came to streaming, people were watching it because they wa waited till it came to streaming. But that so, was two platforms. Yeah. For 6.4 yes. billion. Yeah. Glass Onion, uh, Knives Out Mystery. But again, the Black Panther, Conda Forever, Avatar the Way of Water, Elemental. People waited until it was on Disney Plus to watch them. Yeah. That is their problem. They're not performing at the box office and they're bragging about their top 10 streaming movies. Okay, that's great, Disney. That's great they're top, they're top 10. But one, two, three of these, people waited until it went to streaming to watch the damn movie. So you're not really making any money on that. Other than advertisements that you put on it, you're not making money. So how is that a win? I'm trying to understand. Because, you know, you want people to go to the... Now, Black Panther did okay. Avatar Way of Water did okay. But, I mean, Elemental did not. But I'm just saying, people are watching it here. These two did actually okay in the theater, though. But it's a trend. And people are wanting to know... And I'll tell you right now, every day what's trending is when's Wish coming to Disney Plus. Yeah. Because they, are, they didn't go to the theater. They're waiting to Disney Plus. And it's going to be one of the top 10, probably 2024. Because they waited until it came to Disney Plus. That is your problem. That's not a point to brag about. Gosh, it's not hard. It's just all about the, the angle. It's all about the angle. It's all it is. So those are their, their, their things that they're saying. You should keep us here because of these. And of these, this was from the last year. This is just recent. The $60 billion buyback. This is all within the last like few months. Buyback. The, this $8 billion they're pulling out of their ass. Improved energy. It, this, this is just cuts. And that was in the last quarter. Profitability, they've always been saying, but it's not going to hit it. And, it's, and deb, this is all, you know, nebulous right here. The cuts they made last year, they did do that. But that was because they were forced to because Pelts was coming after them. Mm -hmm. The stock buyback and the dividend, that was all just recent because you had to. Yeah. So and then they go on about, because these are the people that they're targeting. This guy is, I think this guy is his wife's friend's husband. And then everyone was targeting this chick. But they've been there for years. And here's, oh, look, here's Luba Don Drag. Vote white, vote white, vote white. Don't vote other color. Don't vote the colors. Vote white. And it goes on about this. They sent this out to shareholders. And then on top of all this, you know, then they raised prices on tickets. Yeah. So let's talk about that here before we wrap up. Of course they did. It's February, February and October. They always yeah. raise prices. So they, they announced the, the packages for 2025. And with the announcement came a at least 5 to $10 price hike on every ticket. Um, the lowest ticket price is 109 Now it's 119 Yep. Um, and on average, they're raising between 5 to $10 across the board. And that includes multi day passes. Um, annual passes have not increased yet, but you know they're going to. Um, but that doesn't sound like a lot. But if, if you have a family of four, and every day means twenty four dollars extra, not counting the Genie Plus. This is just to get the door. You actually want to ride shit yet? But you got to buy Genie Plus yep. or know what you're doing. Yep. And then you, they're keep raising prices on that. So you're talking an additional one hundred two hundred dollars on a five day trip for people. And people are like that's not a lot of money when you're spending thousands at Disney. But it might because that that would be like you know hey that, there's one of your meals. <laughs> If you're in a sit-down restaurant, that's half of it. Uh, um, that's You're not even exaggerating. I'm not. No. You know, it, it's getting to the point where it's absolutely ridiculous. And then they're like, oh, 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 it's costing them more this per ticket. I know the hotels are going to probably go up too. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, complimentary Typhoon Laguna Bizarre Beach. It's not complimentary. You're paying for it. They just yeah. want to get you there so they can raise the, the, the attendance of those, those parks that don't have as much attendance. And they also have food. And they have merch. And if you're there, you're more likely to buy shit. You know, what gets me about this is that I remember just, it was just a couple of years ago, people were outraged that the lowest price ticket was over a hundred dollars at yes. Disney world. And now we're up to like 120 bucks. And it doesn't go with inflation. Like it's, no. it surpasses inflation oh, yeah. exponentially. D Disney has outpaced inflation massively. There are several charts out there. You can look them up. Uh, they're way, way, way 
uh, outpays and inflate because they basically they just keep raising it, and raising it, and raising it because people keep paying it. Well, you've got to have to have the $60 billion that you're going to spend over 10 years. You're going to have to get that somehow. You're going to have to hit these you know, record profitabilities and operate entertainment, streaming, operating income and all that cash flow, 60% increase. You got to get it somewhere, right? So it kind of reminds me of a tax refund, right? It's like you overpaid the IRS and they uh, give you back a little bit, but without interest. That's kind of what they're doing here. They're jacking all the ticket prices up and they're giving consumers back a little bit, but not much. We're but just going to reskin some stuff. We're going to, you know. Because they're going to tell you it's, it's complimentary, it's but complimentary. it's not. You're paying for You're it. You're paying for it. Yep. But they're going to tell you it's complimentary so that you're more inclined to go, oh, I get a free thing. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, it's like if something's priced like, you know, 99 cents, you are more likely to buy it than if it's a dollar. It's like that. Mm. Except, you know, and then we can, we can chart, you're actually going to spend more on the trip, but you got to go, if you have time when you get there, you get to go to the water parks if you want to. Yeah. On the day you arrive. So, yeah, this just this all uh, uh, reeks of, of desperation on Disney's part. They're definitely freaking out. And I think we're going to see a lot of other panicky decisions and panicky announcements in the coming weeks okay. leading up to the uh, D-Day, which is what? April, uh, April 3rd. April 3rd. So uh, be interesting to see if they drop a bunch of news on April 1st. Like April Fool's. You know, we're no, they're just going to keep they're just going to keep the media and they're going to keep like, oh, I got a brain fart. Let's, let's announce this. Let's announce that. But they 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 they, they gassed everyone last investor. Oh, call. my God. You can't say that. They, I, well, I meant fart. But, you know, <laughs> they gassed everyone in the last investor call when they just like, you know, like, oh, we just pulled all this stuff out of our butts, you know. And now we're touting it as a big, big win for you. You yeah. literally just came up with it when you're trying to save your butts. All right. We're going to wrap this up. Yes. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.